Hi, Habari. So my name is Halima Rajab and I'm here to tell you more about the event that's taking place tomorrow at the Regency Hotel in Tanzania at around 2 o'clock to 6 on the 12th of October. Now we're here to raise the importance of mental health awareness in East Africa and in Tanzania. So if you think you can benefit from this event tomorrow, please come and listen in. Maybe you might learn something. You might end up helping your family member, your friend. We'll be talking about suicide. We'll be talking about um, depression. We'll be talking about postnatal depression, anxiety, panic attacks, and many more. We've got a few guest speakers, a few psychiatrists and psychologists. So meet me there tomorrow. And don't forget our motto. It's OK not to be OK. Sante sana, na furai sana kuwa mingongoni mwenu leo. Ni faraja kubwa kuona kwamba uh, kufurahia na kuwa na nia ya kukuza afya ya kini unaongezeka. Mimi nafundisha kareuki memorial university sasa. Kabla ya hapo, ni kwa mwimbili ni kwa mwimbili kwa muda mrefu sana na nilipoanza pale mwaka wa 82 tulikuwa watu wengi tu katika katika waliojiriwa katika kazi ya ya, ya, ya kuongoza elimu ya afya ya akili. Alafu tulikuwa na watu wengine wawili ambao walikuwa wameletwa na WHO kusaidia katika kuendeleza afya ya akili. Lakini mimi nilikuwa pale hospitalini kushika mambo ya tiba na mafunzo. Mwanzangu alikuwa anazunguka kote katika taifa zima kuangalia namna ya kuendeleza afya ya kile. So tunatoka mbali. Kwa sasa uh, out of the blue ambaye kuna mkutano wa awareness ya ya akili, afya ya akili. Na ni kitu ambacho kina kinaleta faraja na furaha kwamba unaweza ukasikia hili ama lile na uhusu afya ya akili ambayo ingetakiwa hivi iwe hivi katika kila wilaya kila mkoa na pote e, Tanzania na afya ya akili ni kila bacho wakiko ni msingi wa afya ya binadamu na afya ya kili inasaidia katika afya ya viungo vingine vyote e, vya binadamu hivi e, napenda kuwa kuwa salimu na kuwa saluti kwa mba mungira kwenye harakati ya kufanya kitu ambacho ni muhimu sana japokuwa watu wengi wanaweza wasijue kwamba katika vita ya kupigana na umaskini afya ya akili iko mbele katika vita ya kujenga afya za mwili za binadamu afya ya akili iko mbele sana Ndependa pia ni mtaje ambaye ameanzisha hii harakati ya kuwa na mkutano huo wa leo. Dr. Halima Rajabu. Dr. Halima Rajabu 
mimi nilifahamu kama binti wa mwenzangu ambao tumesema wote mara kelele tumekasema wote Dar es Salaam yeye yeah, akachukua fani ya uzazi mimi nilikuwa nimechukua fani ya tiba kabla ya kwenda Canada kuchukua uh, kuchukua fani ya akili lakini station yangu ya kwanza iliyotumwa baada ya kumaliza internship ilikuwa Mtwara alafu kule Mtwara ndio tulikuwa pamoja na doktor Rajabu na katoto kadogo todla eh kazuri mtoto wa mwisho wa doktor ndio leo anafika hapa anaambia mimi ni mtoto wa doktor Rajabu na niko kwenye mambo ya afya ya, ya, ya watoto na mama lakini moyo wangu wote uko kwenye mambo ya afya ya akili na ndio na ndio tunaongoza huu mkutano wa awareness ya afya ya akili so nipenda kushukuru sana kwamba amejua hilo na zikatia hilo na kuwakaribisha wote ndio kuja tujadiliane ili matokeo ya mkutano huu yawe changamoto katika kueneza afya ya akili Tanzania when i was being raised i think i'm actually the opposite of everything that people have said here my colleagues who were stressed decided to go and lose weight i started to gain weight every time i'm stressed stressed i we do what is called comfort eating yeah my parents i'm the only one who's allowed to criticize my parents in this room let's get that straight first my parents raised me very very well in a very articulate manner i am the type of girl who had everything that i wanted i had a very good education i was educated out of the country so i had a lot of opportunities but my parents my dad went to the same school as professor kelonzo he's also a doctor and that's how i reached out to dr kelonzo professor kelonzo now a better part of me as i was growing up and i was experiencing life like grace said you are taught how to go to school and learn and how to get a job but nobody ever teaches you about life you have to learn life lessons yourself unfortunately i went to a country called england where they're very the technology is well advanced and those who've been there know that it's very lonesome something i wasn't used to i was raised in different african countries where you can go next door and play with somebody you can go to the next person talk to somebody if you don't have money you can go to your auntie's house next door or down the road unakula ugali leo umeshiba unaenda nyumbani unalala i went by myself to england i didn't have a relative so i started getting stressed i started getting lonely first signs of depression i come from a family that's well educated and i'm grateful for that and i'm somebody who's very vocal somebody who's very rebellious somebody who know how to express and say i want this and i don't want that i am a black female muslim so i've got all the three things that do not agree with my yeah you understand what i'm saying good and as i was growing up and becoming a teenager and then an adolescent and then i met my so called um soulmate who i was then married to for some time i would never relate to you yeah i'm a woman women have to go through things women can multitask you're not allowed to break down because you have to be there for your kids i have four lovely kids and i was told if i don't give a shout out to them today they will not let me come back here by myself 
So big up to my girls, Aina, Aida. I wouldn't do this without them. Big up to my twin boys, Omar and Asante. Right. So what happened after I had my twins? Everybody has spoken about stress, depression, the types of depressions that we have, major, atypical. But we haven't spoken about being a woman, having kids, and not realizing you've got postnatal depression. Postnatal depression, signs and triggers. Pick up and carry on. That's what we tell ourselves. Mangulea metoka hajarudi nyumbani. Amelala wapi? Hansijui. Akirudi kesho sawa. Tunaendelea. Right? Mama unacho unanyonyesha. Mama unacho ni wewe peke yako unafanya kila kitu mwandani. You have to be the one to think about what am I going to feed my kids today? What am I, how am I going to take my kids to, the, to, to school today? Then things start building up. But you're not allowed to speak about these things because you're an African woman. It's unheard of. Right? Do you all agree with me, women in this room? Something familiar? Right. So, postnatal depression. Things that we don't realize. Women are not educated enough about postnatal depression. But it's there and it's happening. And sometimes we decide, let's neglect it because at the end of the day, it doesn't happen in our society. The reason why I was so passionate about coming out to this event and going viral with some, some of the videos that I've been sending out is because I've always been thinking of how to come out back to Tanzania and give back and think, how do I start talking about things? Because it's cultural. I have to be very careful what I say. I have to be very careful how I express myself. And somebody gave me a call and said, do you know that stuff that you're doing trying to promote mental health and stuff on Facebook? There's a group on my Facebook page. I'm very sorry, but it's just closed because I've, I think I've reached 9.5K and the group has just closed. It's called Anxiety and Depression Support and Advice Group. I was going to try and start something similar here because on this site, people do not sleep. People support each other. So, if you get up in the middle of the night and you're anxious, if you get up in any time, wherever you are, and you think, I'm not okay today, you just text somebody. Sometimes it's easy to speak to someone who doesn't know you. Somebody is easy to speak to, sometimes it's easy to speak to someone who won't judge you. Because I've been judged. I was judged because I'm a black woman. I should be able to handle my business without sharing it. Nikide ni kongea na watu watanambia, lakini maisha kwa mazuri buwana. Kwa nino nalalamika? Because I'm human. What did you say? You said you're allowed to be? You're, not, you're allowed to be human. We are mothers, but we're allowed to be human. Something that's really forgotten in our society. Wanawake munaachwa pekienu, munafanya kila kitu mwondani, munahangaika. You've got so many things to think about and list and go through. So here we call it uh, Moyo Moja. Oh. Moyo Moja is yeah, 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 one heart. <laughs> okay? Maybe due to a, a, a normal, maybe you may have to. Okay. <laughs> that we call it. So, uh, originally, this is uh, 
This time for so that you see if you want to push your boat. The boat like the other one. The other one has to stay in the parent. The other one has to stay in the parent. The other one has to stay in the parent. <laughs> and we'll start to in different parts of the Tanzania. But most of them are from the coastal. So they don't have, they don't have anyone in their, their part. So we don't have to ask about the foundation. We just talk to them, ask about the school and the other. But we don't ask how they are. No, no, no. We don't have where anyone. It's me, you, and others. So originally, uh, people from Norway were taking care of the food. And other. For me, I did a medical checkup and volunteer for food sometimes. And when you come like this, you come together. So some of them are taking care of food. You see, one is just a few months here. Oh, so it was dumped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is something which uh, we are belong to the community. They don't have any. So the usual, the government. Uh, because they go and they assist them. Mm. And usually they come, some of them you will see, which is only two months. Okay, but some of them they already finished to start that seven, mm -hmm. primary. So after primary, then we, we do volunteer for them to do a secondary school. Mm. And after secondary, if anyone wants to help, we take them care to go back to the uh, other institution, like the colleges or high school, something like this. Okay, so they. Is a government, is me, you, and the other, it belong to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, the only things we can do, maybe one day to, to say, if we want to, to trust the relative, through the DNA. So we have to do DNA for all people in Tanzania. Yeah. Then we can get the, so this is a huge billions of dollars. Yeah. To, that's something impossible. So that's why we just take care of them. And after a certain time, we, either we integrate them with the community. Some of them will, will be Mary or Mary. Some of them will usually one. The one uh, guy here, he, uh, you know, here we have art college not far from here. So what he did, he built a garage for Mary. So when they finish, when, when, when they finish standard I mean primary school, usually he took. He took them to his carriage. But now he died. <laughs> Last year he died. Yeah. You see? So what we did when they finished, because we don't want them to, because they don't have a life. Okay? So we don't like them to go anywhere. No, 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 no. When they finish, we try them to integrate with the other place where they can be busy, they are studying or something like this. Okay? So usually we don't ask anything concerning their family. It's Halima again. So today I'm here to talk about something totally different, which is going to be my second project just starting. To those who get a chance to listen to me once more, I've been introduced to a new orphanage, not quite new, it's been running for some years now. It's called Moyo Moja. Moyo Moja in Kingereza in Swahili, in English, it means one heart. So this is an orphanage center where Unlike other centers, this is a place where some children, starting from the age of two days, two months, to the age of 14, have been left in different areas, basically been dumped by their parents, um, their mothers, 
no explanations whatsoever and either the police or the community finds the children and they are brought here for, for to be raised and assisted in any way they can. Um, the orphanage centre at the moment, I have been able to be to interview the parents or the mums that have taken volunteered to look after them, and there are about 29 to 30 children that I've been told of, from the ages of two days. There's a very very small baby that I had the opportunity to cuddle and embrace, and this baby just came a few days ago. Was just found a few days ago. Um, it's sad, and I'm going to try my best to go through this interview without crying. But yeah, we're hoping that myself and my NGO to Heda will be able to somehow lend a hand, assist, outreach, support, help the children in any form or manner. So we're talking from food, um, they've got accommodation, clothes, anything any little helps, you know, pads, diapers, anything that will make somebody's day a little bit different for them to wake up to the next day and feel loved. Having said that, I'm just going to um, show you the pictures that we've taken, what we have done today, and hopefully you'll be hearing from me soon. But right now I'm gonna spend time with the kids. See you later. I am very lucky, okay? So, the co-founder and co-executive director of the Launchpad Tanzania, Ms. Carol Ndossi, phenomenal Tanzania Shiros, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of my fellow students of Kisutu Secondary School, I would like to express our sincere appreciation to the Swedish Embassy and the Launchpad Tanzania for inviting us here. It is truly a great honor. Thank you for your warm reception and gracious hospitality. As we are commemorating this International Day of Girl Child, we would like to first and foremost convey our sincere appreciation to the Launchpad Tanzania through the Shearers campaign, which was launched on 20th September. We were more than delighted when the Tanzania Shearers of 2018 visited us. We were very inspired by the testimonies. For example, Ms. Gemma, who is the founder of the Gemma Foundation, motivated us to work hard and stop at nothing as the reference to her story that while she was battling with cancer, she used her experience to still help others to work. However, we are still eager to learn and we are looking forward to more. Tanzania shares to come and visit us so that we can learn and get inspired by the different experiences they encountered which elevated them to be where they are today. It gives us hope and inspires us to become more than what we could dream to be.
Lastly, we are grateful and we would like to welcome the Swedish Embassy alongside the Launchpad Tanzania to conduct more programs and projects that will continue to empower and encourage us to live our dreams. As the saying goes, when you educate a girl, you educate a nation. Thank you. I believe in being an independent person, an independent female, an independent black female. For those people who know, who've got my number on WhatsApp, my WhatsApp status says black, vocal, single, female. It means a lot to me. Yeah? We don't depend on any men. We don't wait for somebody to give you a hand. You get up in the morning and you do it. It's hard. Because there are those times when, Carol knows, there are those times when you wake up and you think, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, but you have to. Because if you don't, nobody else is going to help you. The world is changing. Everybody is looking out for their own and how to get to the next step by themselves. So why can't you? Why do you have to wait for a man to do something for you? Why do you have to? I don't even want to hear that. Not anymore. Yeah? We are here, we are being educated, you are going to change the world, and one day, a woman will be president. Why not? Why not? So, can we start changing the world? It starts with you. It starts with you. Yeah? Okay, that's all I gotta say, because I've been put on the spot, and I'm so tired. She made me come here this morning, straight from the airport, but yeah, it's okay. We have to do what we have to do. I haven't slept for like two weeks. I've got a project that has actually brought me here. And the whole reason why I wanted to do this project is because I want to bring home. I was raised away from home. I'm not very familiar with my own country, which is very sad. But at the same time, it's time for me to bring back what I know. And it's time for me, for all she heroes, for all females, to start thinking out of the box and how we can improve and develop our country first and yourselves, upgrade yourself. Don't wait for other people to upgrade you. It, it won't come. You bring it. Yeah? Cool? Is that enough? Sure enough? All right. Thank you. Mimi naitwa Dr. Anna. Ni Dr. Bingo wa magonjwa wa watoto. Lakini vile vile ni mkurugenzi wa hospitali ya Miracolo. Ipo Tabata. Sanene. Maisha yangu niliwambia hawa hapa. Nimeanzia huko na mimi nimesoma shule za kawaida tu. Na nimetoka shule nikaenda kifungilo, shule za kawaida kabisa. Na mwanzoni I was I was not very proud of of what I went through. Niliwambia wao kwamba nilifail physics flat F. Yaani kabisa yaani sasa sincheke. Yaani wewe umesoma <laughs> yes, I'm a man who is a man who is a physics. Mengine is a man who 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 is yeah, what is physics? I'm here, doctor now. Na na nakumbuka kati tunenda chuo, nilikataliwa kabisa muimbili, wala like my friend. Una physics, utasomaji. Na mesej yangu ni kwamba, ku, hata kama unafeli kwenye kitu kimoja, alicho kisema dada. Kama kitu kimoja ukiwezi, kuna kitu kingine unakiweza. Umenelo, we cannot all be the same. Ko, kuna vitu ambavu unazo kajikuta, wewe unaviweza, Na yeye haviwezi, lakini ya naweza zaidi, usijilinganishe. One thing, do not, never, ever compare yourself to anyone. Look at them, appreciate them, say laba, yule anafanya vizu ndo, ndo mentors, eh? ndo tunawaitaje ma role models. Let her be your role model. Muangalie, anafanya vile kwa anafanya hivi, anafanya hivi. I want to be more than her. Lakini vitu alivu vifanya ni. Don't compare. Kwa mba mbuna rafiki yangu ye, ye sabu anapata ye. Physics anapata ye. Hiki anapata ye. Vote anapata ye. Sami ni nakuwa, jani misiwezi. No. Do not compare. Na hata kwenye familia. I normally tell parents ni kiwaona. Mbuna mtuto nguyo yuko hivi uye. Na a a a. Yani everyone you are an individual. Jinsi zako na zangu na za yule. Totally different. Kwa hiyo wewe angalia. Anza ku aim. 
kule nataka kufanya nini nataka kuwa nani umenelewa na alisema kwamba sijui kusoma law sijui kufanya utachelewa kuolewa hakuna nimeolewa na miaka 28 na watoto wangu wawili here i am kwa hiyo hakuna ndio safari ni ndefu lakini hamna hakuna hakuna easy yani success is not an easy it's not an easy thing tunakotoka nimeacha mimi wakati naacha kazi kama mtu nilikuwa nikimwambia kwamba naacha kazi na mwambia unaachaje kazi Yaani hao unaanzaje kuacha kazi serikalini hata wazazi wangu wenyewe walikuwa hawanielewi kwa sababu wazazi wetu walikuwa na believe in all about kufanya kazi serikalini. Yaani sasa hivi unapoanza kuona kamwanga wanasemaga you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yaani kidogo unaanza kuona kamwanga ka, lakini at the beginning it was hard unaogopa lakini ukijipa moyo ndio ile anasema ukizima taa ukiwa ndani. <laughs> nikitoka nje eh ndo mimi ndo mimi ndo CEO eh ndo mimi unakuwa unaogopa lakini unavyokwenda you build yourself what you tell yourself inside it's what you tell yourself nilikuwa na wewe angalia wenzako kwamba nafanyaje vikitokea viongozi na wewe sema nataka na mimi monitor nataka kuwa kiranja kuja amenifundisha mambo mengi. Cha kwanza nifundishe kuhusu stress. Stress inapelekea mtu afanye vitu ambavyo hakukutejea kuvifanya na vinaweza kumsababishia matatizo. Ye ameni nilifanya leo nikijua kwamba ukishia ukishia kitu ambacho kinakukera au kinakukwaza unaweza ukakiondoa yani kinaweza kukusaidia ni kupunguza kitu ambacho yani kupunguza hasira au kitu ambacho ukutejea ukifanya ukakifanya kama umeshindwa kushare na mtu yani hata ongea mwenyewe pek balini kwenye mti yani ukishare tu yani kikitoka ndani ya moyo wako kinaweza kupunguza usifanye vitu ambavyo hukutajia kuvifanya mimi nyingi niko na stress na lalaga mmm watu wangu wanafunzi wengine ni kwamba wapende kushare matatizo kwa sababu ukishare matatizo ni half solved kwa majina naitwa Aaron Paul Mertambo nipo kidato cha sita. kwa leo kwanza ningependa kutoa shukrani za zati kwa ugeni ambao tumepata hapa shuleni ambapo wamekuja kikundi cha watu ambapo wametufundisha mambo mazuri moja hapo ikiwemo ni a, ni afya I mean akili mental health ambayo imetuwezesha sisi kujitambua another thing concerning mental health ni kwamba namna gani ambao unaweza kuovercome vitu kama vile stress na namna gani unaweza kujikamua wakati wewe unakuwa umekutana au umekumbana na changamoto kama hizo kwa hiyo ni vyema sana ukashare ideas ili kuweza kufanya je kuondoa kile kitu moyoni kwa sababu the moment unapoenda kushare hizo ideas na wenzako unapata relief inside ambayo itakusaidia wewe kupata auheni na kuepusha na kufanya vitu vingine kama commit suicide au other types of crimes kwa ni kitu kizuri ambacho kinaleta manufaa kwa wanafunzi hasa sisi ambao tupo level ya juu advanced level. Ah uh, kwa sababu hii ni media na inafikia kama imetufikia na sisi wasijali kwa sababu unapopata kitu ni, ni vizuri dawa kashia na wenzako. Naweza ukatoka hapa tukapishia katika shule nyingine kupitia groups za shule, kupitia website ya shule na katika clubs tofauti. Kwa sababu tuna clubs tofauti ambazo tunakuwa tunaziconduct hapa shule. Na vizuri kwamba tuna viongozi ambao wanakutanaga na viongozi wa shule nyingine. Kwa hiyo itawezesha kuwafikia hata wengine ambao hawakupata kitu ambacho sisi tumeweza kukipata kwa siku hii ya leo. Ah uh, mtu wangu kwa sababu kweli ni kweli nakubaliana kwamba asilimia kiasi fulani cha asilimia ya Tanzania bado tuna uelewa mdogo uelewa wa chini kuhusiana na magonjwa ya mental health I mean kuhusiana na swala so zima ya mental health sasa 
sio tuliache sisi jukumu la serikali ni kwa tutumie sisi ambao sisi ambao tayari tumepata maarifa ambao tayari tumepata hii elimu tuweze kuelimisha na wengine tuseme tuiache sisi serikali serikali zikafanya mambo yote lakini sisi kama sisi ambao tayari tumepata uelewa kama huu tukianzesha tukiweza tuke, kufanikiwa kukutana na makundi mbalimbali ya wanafunzi wenzetu au hata sa nyingine ku conduct for i mean ku conduct outside activities kwa mfano kwenda ku visit vitu vya tutayatima au watoto wa mitaani ni vizuri tukawa tunasaidiana katika kuendeza hii habari ambayo tumeipata hapa leo Asante kwa majina naitwa Precious ni mwanafunzi wa kisoto kidato cha 5 mm -hmm. yeah kwa hiyo kwa ujio wa dada Halima nimejifunza kuhusu hii kitu inaitwa mental health sana nimejifunza kwamba watu tuspende kukaa na frustrations au stress kwa sababu they kill inside kwa sababu tuki, the way tunavozidi kukana hii kitu inaitwa depression inaweza ikasababisha madhara makubwa labda tukapelekea kujiua au mambo mengine and sisi kama wanafunzi binafsi yangu naona hii ni muhimu kwa sababu we are still young na kama tumepata elimu ya namna gani ya kukabiliana na depression bado wadogo tutajua ni namna gani ya kutatua hayo matatizo yetu katika umri wetu mpaka tutakapokuja kuwa mama wa baadaye yani wazazi wa baadaye. Kwa mimi binafsi yangu hii elimu ambayo tumeipata hapa ni ya muhimu sana sana kwa sababu depression kills. Nimekutana na watu kama hao ambao wamepitia depression. Mimi mwenyewe binafsi yangu ni mmoja kati ya watu ambao nimepitia kitu kama depression. Lakini fortunately nimekukutana na watu nimewaambia my problems na wameza kunisaidia namna gani ya kuyatatua. Mhm. Mm Yeah, I do know. It's okay not to be okay. Actually, stress kills, depression kills. Sometimes it's better if you let it out ili tujue ni namna gani tunaweza tukakusaidia. Yeah. My message is kwamba tujipende, tuthamini maisha yetu, tuthamini uhai wetu kwa sababu life is the most greatest gift that God ametupa. Kwa hiyo, yeah. Kwa jina naitwa Eva Gidius ni mwanafunzi wa kisoto sekondari. Ujio wa leo dada Arima umetufunza mengi sisi wanafunzi. Umetufunza mengi sisi wanafunzi. Kwanza ametufundisha juu ya kujitambua, kwamba sisi watoto wa kike tunahitaji kujitambua zaidi, kwamba sisi ni wakina nani, tupo wapi kwa wakati gani, tunatakiwa kufanya nini, tutabidi tuwe wapi baadaye. Ametufundisha mambo mengi, ametuambia kwamba Unaweza ukashare mawazo yako na mtu mwingine kwamba tuspende sana kukaa na mawazo yetu mioyoni kwamba tunahitaji watu wengine ambao wanaweza kutusupport either warimu, rafiki yako au mtu yote wa karibu kwa kwamba unaweza kumueleza shida zako na akakupa ushauri pia ametuelezea kuhusu ametufundisha ame kuhusu masuala mazima ya psychology kwamba sisi wa, na, watoto wa kike au wasichana au wanawake tuna ile kasumba ya kunyanyapaliwa katika jamii. Kwa ametupa yani ametuambia kwamba sisi wasichana tupo na nguvu sawa na wanaume, kwamba tusijifanye sisi ni inferior sana, kwamba sisi tupo sana na nani na wanaume ambao tunaweza kufanya wanaume na sisi tunaweza tukafanya hicho hicho. Kwa hayo ndio nilojifunza leo. Wito wangu kwa jamii nilikuwa naomba jamii isipende kuwanyanyasa watoto wa kike, kwamba inaona watoto wa kike kwamba hawafai. Labda wanasema This job is for men only and this is for women. Kwamba sisi tunatakiwa kuonyesha mfano wa kuigwa kwamba tukiangalia mpaka sasa hivi la makamu wa rais ni mwanamke Samia. Rais wetu ni mwanaume. Kwa inaonyesha balance ya nini ya jenda katika uongozi pia hata mashuleni. Kuna shule ambazo zimechanganyika boys na girls inaonyesha competition between boys and girls. Pia katika familia ndio maana iko kwa baba na mama. Kuna ile kupanda na kushuka kwa nini? kwa uongozi katika familia. Kwa hiyo yote naonesha nini? Usawa katika jamii. Kwamba tunaweka wanawake sawa na wanaume. Jina langu ni Madam Gosbet Godefrida. Um, nafundisha kisutu sekondari. Ni mwalimu na ni mlezi wa wasichana. Kwa ujumla ninashukuru kwanza na mshukuru Miss Alima kwa ujio wake na kwa kutujali kwani alituona tu siku moja 
tukiwa ubalozi wa Sweden na ndipo tulipata kumfahamu na akaahidi kwamba anakuja kuongea na wasichana kwani yeye anadii na mambo ya wanawake kwa leo nimefurahishwa sana na ujio wake kwani wanafunzi wamepata kujua mengi kutoka kwake kwanza amewaelimisha juu ya afya yao sio afya ya kimwili tu bali ya kiakili anasema pale akili ikiwa iko vizuri manake mentally uko fit na mwili automatically utakuwa fit kwa hilo ni jambo la muhimu sana kwani ndio maana vijana siku hizi wanakuwa na matatizo ya kiakili juu ya kwamba tunajali sana afya ya mwili tu bila kujali afya ya akili hilo ni jambo zuri sana na watoto nafikiri wa, wataliishi kwanza kabisa mimi napenda kuwaasa wazazi tusiogope watoto hicho kitu kimetokea kwamba tunawaogopa watoto hivyo unakosa kumfahamu mwanao anahitaji nini anakuwa mawapi na anakosa nini tusipowaogopa watoto maana tutaweka karibu muweke mtoto karibu ili aweze kukuelezea matatizo yake na sisi kama wazazi ambao sio wa kisasa tusipende kulazimisha watoto waishi kama sisi tulivyoishi miaka saba iliyopita watoto hawa au wanafunzi hawa mimi kama mwalimu ninawalea according to the time eh hey, kutokana na muda uliopo sasa hivi treatment ndio kwa nampa mtoto ambaye yuko sasa hivi let's say chuo kikuu ama ameshaolewa ameanza maisha yake yuko kazini tofauti na mtoto huyu ambaye ninaye leo ambaye ambaye ni mwaka 2020 na 20 ama mwaka 2019 na, 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 na au watoto inabidi tuwale kadiri ya mazingira wanaona mambo mengi they exposed hawana akili finyu yani wenyewe wana akili ambayo imepanuka wana mawazo na wenyewe wanaweza kutushauri kwa hiyo tuwasikilize na kutaka kuwasikiliza mweke karibu mtoto jamii waweke karibu wa vijana iwavute karibu ili waweze kujua wanataka nini wana changamoto gani na wana fail wapi tukifanya hivyo nafikiri jamii itakuwa iko sahihi kabisa watoto wasikatazwe kutumia mitandao lakini wawe guided parents should play their own uh, their part to guide the, the children ni wakati gani watumie mitandao na kwa namna gani ukimuelimisha mtoto wa kike umeelimisha taifa zima kwa sababu mtoto wa kike ni mama mtoto wa kike ni daktari mtoto wa kike ni mlezi kwa hiyo sisi hizo opportunity tunazipenda sana na tunazi, tunazitamani kila wakati zitufikie ili watoto wetu waweze kujenga taifa lililo bora ninapenda Tanzania yenye mtoto mwenye confidence mtoto anayejitambua mtoto anayeweza kukabiliana na, na challenge zozote za maisha na, na mtoto ambaye sio job seeker but job creator thank you Hey everyone, so it's Halima again and this is my last little project. I was able to come and visit Kisutu Girls High today, a secondary school. I was able to speak to a few of the students and we shared a one-to-one, -one, got to know each other a little bit more and I'm sure they're now, well I hope they've taken my message across that is not allowed to just be on your own and not talk about your problems and there's always help out there there's somebody to talk to we're here we're listening we just want the best for our future generation and it starts from here charity begins at home and this is where i am this is Tanzania signing out i'll see you next year everyone so my journey into Tanzania and our little three projects has finally come to an end um, the purpose of my travel was to first of all come and join the girl child project which is under the launch pad with Karen Dorsey and I've been able to take one student who I'm going to mentor 
until they finish um, what we would say the A levels, so Form 6. The second project was raising mental health awareness in Tanzania and I think we've managed to have a good turnout and we have delivered the message. We will keep delivering it, it's not the end, we too will keep coming, we'll keep um, promoting mental health awareness because I think everybody has agreed with me after this little event that we've had, it is essential, it's something that is unheard of, not spoken about. And we are hoping we are going to be able to resolve that problem and eliminate certain situations that cause it. I've also been able to go to Bagamoyo and I was privileged to meet some orphan children who were very happy and they just raised our spirits. These children, I think you'll be seeing in the documentary, um, the youngest is two months old today. This little boy is two months old. They range from two months to 14 years, and they are vo they volunteer. It's just voluntary work. People who are just volunteering to look after them in the Moyo Moya orphanage. The last thing that I did was I came and I spoke a little bit about depression, and I had a chance to have one to one with some of the girls in in um, Kisutu Secondary School. I was able to listen, understand and assist where I could. And I hope with that little message that I've left here, I have made a little difference because like I said, charity begins at home. This is my home, this is Tanzania, and I'm proud to be Tanzanian and I want to come back and I want to give more. Thank you for watching this and stay blessed. It's okay not to be okay.